Hello SOLIDWORKS community, my name is Nate Andrews and welcome to this three-part video series where we will tackle the awesome world of Pinewood Derby racing. This was the first year that my son and I were able to experience the Pinewood Derby together. So like any good engineer dad who hasn't done this type of competition before, I thought that I should go way overboard in how we prepare for the project. What we will see during this video series are what I thought would be a good design after I did a lot of research on the topic. Then we will analyze the design in a virtual wind tunnel. After that, we will do some virtual speed tests. Finally, we will see how our design held up to the actual Pinewood Derby race. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoy it. Before we start to design the car, let's take a look at the engineering problem at hand. First, we start with a track. Then, we build a car that will run down the track against other cars. As we design the car, we need to take many things into consideration. First, the mass of the car, which must stay under 5 ounces. Next, the center of gravity of the car. Calculating this is very important in a few ways. First, if the center of gravity is too far back in the car, it will likely do a wheelie as the car levels out at the bottom of the track. Second, and more importantly, it has to deal with the weight or potential energy of the car. Simply put, the higher up off the floor the center of gravity is, the more potential energy that you have in the car, which translates into speed of the car. The final thing that we should account for is the friction of the system. We would need to account for air friction and friction between the wheels and track. We were given the Pinewood Derby Kit as a starting point, which we see here. Since we were given a wooden starting point, I also wanted a starting point for my SOLIDWORKS models. I looked to the internet to find the Pinewood Derby models, which I found on 3D Content Central quite fast. We must now determine a shape to use for our car. I asked my son whether he wanted to make a really fast car or a specially themed car. As you can see here, there were a lot of different cars, some that were designed for speed, and some that were more works of art than anything. The designs that I came up with for the car were meant to be basic enough for a six-year-old to try to build, so I won't go into the step-by-step -step design of the car. I did, however, try to design the car with those main considerations that I mentioned earlier. To start to analyze the designs, we needed to add the weights to the assembly. The trick was to get the right amount of weight under the maximum allowance as well as have the center of gravity about one inch in front of the rear wheels. I read in several places that would be the ideal location. After I added the weight to the designs, I turned on the center of mass feature in SOLIDWORKS. To do this, you must go to your mass properties of the assembly, and then check the box Create Center of Mass Feature. We can now measure from the rear axle to the center of mass, altering the model weight until we are as close as we can be to that one inch mark. Next, I wanted to test for the air friction on the car. In this case, I'm not looking for empirical data, but I wanted to make sure the design was such that the air would flow around the car smoothly. This is where we can use SOLIDWORKS Flow Express to create a virtual wind tunnel. The type of flow study is an external fluid flow study, but Flow Express does not allow for external studies. So we must make this an internal study by building a box around the car. Now let's set up the study. Go to the Tools pull down, select Express Products, and then Flow Express. We then see the welcome screen, and if we hit the next arrow, it allows us to toggle the fluid volume to make sure it is what we are expecting. Next, choose the fluid to analyze. In Flow Express, you can only do air and water. After this, we need to decide what the inlet of our system is. Remember that we need to choose the inside of the system, so use the Select Other to get the face on the inside. Again, we are more interested in the flow of air and not the quantitative measurement here, as we are using this as a quick design check. Next, we need to select the output surface, again remembering to select a face on the inside of the system. Finally, let's solve it.
we can now view the results and see a nice graphical representation of what the air is doing as the car passes through it. This block is our control car, but we can see the air hit the front face and have to move up and over it. This isn't a good design. Here are the fluid profiles of the other cars. This brings us to the conclusion of part one of this series. I hope you've enjoyed it and will join us for the second video in the series, where we will do some virtual Pinewood Derby races.